Hi, my name is Harry Melsop. I'm from Auckland, New Zealand, a uh, freshman here at Stanford, studying computer science and economics. Uh, when I'm not in class, I enjoy riding my bike, hanging out with friends, and uh, working on side projects. A typical day here at Stanford starts um, probably about 10 a.m. Uh, and I'll head off to class. My first class is quarters at 11.30. Uh, from there I usually grab lunch with friends over at Tresida uh, and have class through to 3 or 4 p.m. Uh, then after that, dinner uh, primarily and then head off to go and work on homework, problem sets uh, or just other sort of miscellaneous stuff. Because today's a Saturday, I don't have class thankfully, um, so I'll spend a bit of time working on a drone. Um, that I've been working on for the last seven or eight weeks. Uh, all right, so I live in Robley, uh, which is the oldest and largest dorm here at Stanford. Um, I live, uh, because I'm a freshman, I'm in a um, three room quad. So I've got three roommates in total. Uh, we've got two bedrooms and the sort of like shared living space that you're kind of looking at now. Um, so it's got all of our desks, that's where I work, over in the corner. Um, it's been quite a lot of time here, uh, somewhat unsurprisingly. Um, just doing homework, problem sets, coding, working on projects. As you can see on my desk, I've got a robot car and a drone sitting there, which I've been tinkering around with last night. Uh, and yeah, this is just kind of the centre of well, the place I spend time at college. So tell me where we are right now. Sure, so um, we're in the Robley Makerspace. Um, it was just finished a couple of weeks ago, actually. Um, this room actually used to be the game room. We used to have pool tables mm -hmm. and uh, foosball and stuff in here. Well, all that stuff has actually been shifted out to the lobby now to make uh, space for this. So, um, I mean, the idea of it is that it's gonna become a space where people can come and um, work on things that maybe aren't so sort of academic focused, right? Mm -hmm. So they could come and work on, uh, like what I've come here for, the, the robot car. Um, people, eventually they're gonna be canvases over there. Um, there'll be 3D printers, soldering irons, that kind of stuff here. Oh so, cool, so it's like a whole like workshop. Right? Yeah, so I believe those, uh, those things are actually coming in tomorrow, so we just miss them, but Damn. yeah. <laughs> but, um, so tell me about the projects you work on outside of class. Um, so at the moment, um, I'm in an electrical engineering class um, where, for the first part of the quarter, um, we were just working on more of the theoretical side of electrical engineering, um, and then now it's culminated in um, building some sort of project. Um, so here we've got the robot car that I've been working on for the last couple of days. Right. Um, the idea behind this um, is that it's going to be controlled, or it currently is controlled through an app on the smartphone. And so besides the car, what other sort of projects are you working on right now? For sure, so one of, um, one of my friends and I are working on building um, a drone. Um, so from scratch, we're trying to pull a drone together that will be able to autonomously fly around the Stanford campus. So when you say autonomously flying, you mean like nobody was at the controls? Nobody's at the controls, yeah. Spooky. Yeah. How would you say like your like engineering skills have been changing through this class and through your own projects? I think that um, the projects build uh, a lot of like self-confidence to go out and just start working on something, mm -hmm. um, which I really like. Um, because you know, previously learning sort of physics and chemistry and stuff in the school, you learn all about the theoretical stuff, but it's kind of hard to know where to even begin if you want to put something together yourself. So I think that um, the classes that I've taken this quarter in particular and the UAV club has really um, taught me that you, you sort of can go out and, and look stuff up online and just start pulling things together. Yeah, and you have this great space to build it all. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So we're in the Huang Engineering building right now, um, and there's a sort of cafe on this level and everything, but here, this is a reasonably sort of famous place. It's a 24-7 video call line through to MIT. Um, so I've never actually seen it being used, but I've heard that people will sit here and talk and, and discuss ideas and stuff um, with uh, the guys in Boston all the way on the other side of the country. Outside of academics and stuff, what does social life look like as like a freshman at Stanford? Yeah, I mean, um, you get pretty close with most of the people that you live with in the dorm. 
uh, people on my hall, stuff like that. Uh, we hang out all the time. Uh, other than that, um, something that was a shock to me and probably won't be to most people who have lived in the States their whole life is the sort of the fraternity and sorority thing. Um, so we, yeah. don't, we don't have that in New Zealand. So would you say that Stanford like has like a lot of school spirit, people like show up to sporting games, events, stuff like that? Uh, this afternoon, for example, my roommate Blake, he's on the gymnastics team um, here and they're hosting the Canadian and Japanese national teams for a competition. Mm -hmm. um, so at four o'clock, I'm going to head over to that um, with a few friends and and uh, support him, um, yeah, for sure. So there's a lot of stuff happening on campus. All the time, um, yeah. I guess, yeah, the challenge is just, you got work to do as well as like. Exactly, it's a constant yeah. balancing act, yeah. So academically, why did you pick Stanford? Sure, um, I mean, going into the sort of university application process, I knew I was quite interested in technology. Um, I enjoyed engineering, sort of related stuff at high school. Um, but I also really liked economics um, and really interested in entrepreneurship and potentially trying to do that kind of stuff into the future. So Stanford sort of stuck out to me as uh, a natural choice in that, in that regard. Um, it's in Silicon Valley, um, it's renowned for its engineering department, um, good economics faculty, um, so I thought uh, that would be that would be amazing and I just really wanted to come here for those reasons. Yeah. You're looking for a major in computer science and maybe a minor in economics. Yeah. What would the requirements for that look like if you're going to pursue that all the way through? Yeah, um, so with the computer science department there are six classes in particular which are sort of like the core behind that um, and then after that you take a whole bunch of electives um, because I think I want to pursue the artificial intelligence track um, that means taking a lot of classes um, in AI, uh, right. in linear algebra, stuff like that. Um, for economics, um, be totally honest, I haven't looked super carefully into exactly what classes I need to take. I know what my sort of uh, runway for the next year looks like in terms of classes, um, but once I fulfill that um, calculus prerequisite, then I can actually start really getting through the economics courses. Cool, so it sounds like you have a lot of math to do, and then you'll be able to branch out and study a little bit more specifically what you want to study. Exactly, um, and that's something that I uh, really like about here, is that you really have an enormous amount of freedom. So there are some prerequisites like math, um, but really you can, as long as you fulfill the requirements before you take the class, you can take anything you like, which is really cool. Awesome. Cool, that was awesome. Why did you decide to go abroad for college as opposed to staying in New Zealand? Yeah, um, I mean in part it was because um, I, I really wanted to come here in particular. Um, so, so, so coming to Stanford was, was my dream for, for the reasons that, that we went over a bit earlier. I um, love the place it's in. Um, also my parents were always really strong proponents of going away for university. Both of, um, both of them uh, went to to different places from, from where they grew up uh, and they thought that was a really good experience to have. Um, so uh, I was of and am of the same opinion um, that it's a, it's a good idea to go away somewhere um, and it's nowhere much better than California. Yeah, so, so, so what do you think you gained specifically from moving away from where you grew up to go for higher education? Um, so on like a sort of personal development level, um, there's a lot of independence that you get. So where I'm from, um, if I'd chosen to go, I'd go to university in New Zealand, I likely would have stayed in Auckland where I grew up. Um, and so that would have meant I probably would still be living at home. Um, so it's, it's, forced, um, it's forced me to make, make new friends. Um, and it's also given me um, a huge plethora of, of new opportunities that I probably wouldn't have had had I gone home. Um, I've met really interesting people. Um, I've gone to places around here that I never would have otherwise seen. Um, you know, that class I talked about, um, the, the space systems class, um, and I've gotten to go and visit companies I otherwise never never would have had that opportunity right, to right. do so. What, what, what was really surprising is that everyone's very busy. So I, I before coming here, I imagined myself, uh, you know, every weekend going and doing something. Uh, that really, that isn't quite the case. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, but that's probably how it should be, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's not necessarily been a bad thing. The, the people who I've, who I've met have been um, some of the most interesting people I've ever met. Um, and that, in some senses that, that was surprising to me, um, that these people that I met at NSO or whatever, orientation or whatever, um, actually as you sort of get to know them better, you unpick uh, what they've done in the past, who they are, and um, 
that's been really interesting and that's been something that I couldn't do so much at high school because you don't live with those people. Um, right. You know, you're friends with them at school and whatever, but really living with other students. Um, and, uh, you know, you know student, students here who've probably done something or another that is, that's been interesting and therefore influential in their life and unpicking what that was, um, that's been really interesting. If you like this video and want to learn more about other top colleges around the world, don't forget to subscribe.